Hey, thanks for stopping by today. Today we're going to do an ammo can in the Thunderbolt. This will be the biggest um, flat object I've engraved in the bolt and uh, we'll need the Roco Twister tray to be able to do it because it's uh, six and a half inches thick this way. And so you wouldn't be able to do that on, uh, on a stock bolt, but with the tray you certainly can do it. So the first thing that we're going to do uh, or talk about is getting the sticker off of this ammo can. A lot of people have troubles because sometimes they're just not easy to get off. I'll show you the way I do it. I normally will take a heat gun and apply heat to the back side of this label and most of the time it'll peel right off. So I'll show you how to do that. The other thing that we're going to do today is I'm going to show you in Lightburn how to use their test card feature. It's a great feature in Lightburn and what I'm going to do is I know what my settings are for my tumblers. I know that I could probably use that for this engrave and, and uh, get it done. But what I want to do is I want to be able to see if I can determine a setting where I'm just engraving the green paint off and leaving the tan undercoat or the primer uh, there. And it just gives it a different look and I really like it. Plus it leaves a coating on that bare metal so you don't have to worry about corrosion. And that's something that if you engrave all the way down to the bare metal, because it's not stainless, it's just regular steel, um, it will rust in, unless you coat it with something. Now normally what I normally do if I'm engraving all the way down to the metal is I'll put up, up you know, a, car, a coat of car wax or something like that on it. Um, just to protect it and let my customer know that, hey, you need to keep something on that or it will rust. And so we'll go ahead and generate a test card. I'm going to actually run a test pattern on one side to see if we can come up with a different setting to remove the green paint and leave the tan uh, uh, primer on it. And then if we can determine that, what we'll do is we'll lay this out in light burn. I've got a little Christmas scene uh, that a customer wants. Um, she's going to use it as kind of the wrapper for all of the little trinkets that she's got him. And ammo cans can be a, a really a good gift, primarily because once you're done with Christmas, you can use it for all kinds of things. It makes a great toolbox for side-by-sides and all kinds of different things for these ammo cans. And so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to show you how to remove the label. I'm going to show you the test card feature in Lightburn. We're going to burn that test card in Lightburn. We're going to see if we can come up with a setting and try that setting on a scene that a customer wants and see what we can come up with. Again, this is the biggest uh, item that I've engraved in the bolt. We're just going to see how uh, well it works. The other benefit that I'm excited about is with the bolt, you've got so much more control with your power from basically 1% all the way up to 100% that I think we'll probably be able to get a setting dialed in. So I'm just burning the green paint off, leaving the undercoat, and we'll have something different to offer to our customers. So let's go ahead and get this, uh, this label peeled off, and we'll go from there. Thanks for sticking around. Okay, I've got my heat gun plugged in. We'll take the lid off of this box. Get that removed, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna just apply a, a good amount of heat. I've just got a, a cheap paint gun from Harbor Freight, doesn't take anything special. Just be careful because you can burn yourself pretty easy by doing this. So you just want to heat up the back of that. I find that it's easier to do it from the back than it is to try to uh, deal with anything from the front. And um, usually once you get this adhesive heated up, And just like that, we've got that off. Now I'll wipe that down before I engrave this with some alcohol or some mineral spirits just to get the, the stickiness off. But sometimes these labels can be next to impossible to take off. And I find that if you heat up the adhesive, it normally will come right off. Just thought I'd share with you my way to get the sticker off an ammo can. So let's jump into Lightburn and uh, we'll get our test card designed and get this in the bolt, see what we can come up with. I'm in Lightburn right now. I'm connected to my bolt 
and uh, we want to do a material test card to determine this best setting for our, our uh, ammo box. So I'm going to come up here to Laser Tools, down to Material Test, click on that, and the first thing I'm going to do is I know that on tumblers, I engrave uh, tumblers at 600 millimeters per second at 80% power. And so what I thought I'd do is I'm going to start at 500 millimeters per second and go to 600 millimeters a second for max. And for my minimum power, I'm going to leave it at 10% and go um, to 100%. Or actually, I'm going to leave it at um, 80% because I know... Um, that's about as high as I want to go. So we're going to start at 10%. We're going to go to 80%. And so that's going to be our range, but then we're not done yet. We've got to come down here and we've got to uh, set up kind of how we want this to look. So the text editing, if I preview this right now, the text editing feature, see if I can get this over so you can see it. So this text edit, edit text setting, that's for all the text that's going to be on your material test. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump in there and put in um, my Tumblr engraved settings because I'm fairly confident that that will shine through good. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come in here to edit text setting. We're going to make sure that this is on fill and not line. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just put in um, 600 millimeters per second at 80% power. And we want uh, lines per inch at 317, which is a default. Your scan angle should be uh, defaulted at zero. And we're uh, not going to have any error, so our high error is turned off. We're going to say OK. OK, and we've got our mode set to fill. So that'll take care of the text. And then the material setting, what this is, is um, this is your telling the the test card whether you want to uh, you want to cut or an engrave and so we're determining settings for engraving today and so I want to make sure that when I come into this edit material setting that they are in fill mode not in line mode so I'm going to go here I'm going to come up here and I'm going to make sure this is fill and I'm going to go ahead and just put in a 400 millimeters these aren't going to matter much because it's going to it's going to refer to your to your range that you have specified here. But I'm going to just put in 420. It really doesn't matter because they're going to use these numbers. But the big thing here is whether it's line or fill. You need fill if you're determining engraving settings, and you need fill, excuse me, line if you're determining cut settings. So make sure that this is set to fill. Um, 317 is by default. Um, of course, we got bi-directional fill. Our error is off. And we're going to say OK. And at this point, we're going to preview it. And you can see that it's going to take roughly six minutes to run this test card. And so we're going to start at 500 millimeters per second on this left side and go all the way up to 600. And on the bottom, we're going to start at 10% power and go all the way up to 80. And what that's going to tell you is kind of where would you need to be um, to get the brightest engrave possible uh, on your ammo can. And so that's, what's, that's what we're going to do. So what all I've got to do now here is, unlike other things that you do, you don't, you don't come over here and hit send. What you'll want to do is you'll want to hit start. Usually I frame it just to make sure it's going to go where it's supposed to. Um, and the other thing you can do, if you like this setup for maybe other things, you can always save these as a preset, and then you can have a list of presets here. So just remember you have the ability to save and uh, trash the ones that you're not using anymore. So play with this tool, because this can be hugely helpful, especially when you're new and you need to start determining what your cut uh, and your engrave settings are going to be. This material test uh, generator can really help you out. So we'll go ahead and send this to the uh, bolt and get it engraved, see what it looks like. Okay, we were running this test pattern. Uh, once I got the changes dialed in, 
remember you've got to set your pattern to fill and not line. And uh, make sure that you go into both the bottom two tabs, the edit text and the edit material, to make sure that your uh, test card is set up right. You want uh, if you want to do some testing for cutting, it should be fine. And if you want to do engraving like we're doing here, it should be set to fill. That's engraving the, uh, the text around the perimeter and then engraving the different settings that you specified in your test card. Now, I don't know whether we're going to be able to see whether we got a just burning the green off and going into the, uh, the sub layer or not. Good exercise to follow and see what we can do. Okay, let's see uh, what we got here. I'm squirting a little LA Awesome on here and a little scrub pad. We're doing this live, both you and me together, so. See what see what we got going on here. Well, it doesn't look like we're going to be able to do much far as you can, you can, let me zoom in on this a little bit. You can see that my settings for tumblers, which is um, 600 millimeters and 80% power, um, get all the way down to the bare metal. That's not a problem. And I was fairly confident that that was going to happen. And you can see kind of the uh, 10 to 20% worth of power no matter whether we're going 500 or 600, you're not going to penetrate the the paint. Once you get up uh, past 25%, um, you're going to start burning that paint off. And again, it's not going to be real shiny like a tumbler, just because number one, it's not stainless steel. Number two, um, the quality of the steel that they use for these ammo cans is is, is not the greatest. So don't expect a bright shiny engrave when you're doing ammo cans i was just curious if we could if we could get any other color like a tan color and at least with this set of parameters it doesn't look like it you can get you know just a little bit of dark but that's about it and so if you would want to mess with these uh and try different settings you can certainly do that um, but you can see that, you know, what I would more than likely do um, is what I find interesting is my 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 normal setting for engraving here, 680, which is this right up here. It's not as good as it, this stuff is down here. So these test cards, material test cards on things that you haven't done before can tell you, a, a, you know, quite a bit on what you should be doing. It just looks like to me that down around... 550 and around 75 percent would be maybe a better choice because i scrubbed on this pretty good and it just didn't come off as clean where this was this area right here is a pretty clean engrave so i don't think i'm going to try to do a two-tone at least not with these settings but i know what my settings are going to be for my can i'm going to go with like um 560 and probably about 70 72 percent so i'll probably go 575 and 75 percent power right in here and we'll engrave this ammo can and see how it turns out but that's how you use the material test card generator um it's a great tool in lightburn you just got to play with it a little bit it can be a little tricky just remember go through all the settings every time and uh you'll be able to do stuff like this so what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh put a new can in here Get the design that the customer wants laid out. We'll jump into light burn. I'll show you that right quick. And then we'll come back and burn this design on this ammo can. And you can see that it's really easy to do a, an ammo can uh, on the Thunderbolt with one of these twister trays. Very repeatable. you got plenty of room. And uh, so let's go ahead and finish this project up. Okay, when you uh, decide what you're gonna do, just remember to put the lid back on it because this way you can measure the width of that ammo can is 11 and an eighth wide. And you wanna go from the bottom 
and that's about six and an eighth tall. So that's how we're gonna set up our frame and drop our design within that frame. So it's gonna be about 11 and an eighth by six and an eighth. And you just wanna make sure that you have that lid on, that way uh, you don't get the wrong measurements. So we'll go ahead and lay that out in Lightburn and uh, get this design going. Okay, we're uh, set up here in Lightburn. My bolt is connected. I've generated a rectangle that is, this is our frame, and it's 11 and an eighth by six and an eighth. And I've centered the design that she wanted in the middle of this ammo can. Remember when you're doing this design, you wanna take these measurements with the lid on it. Otherwise, part of your design will be covered up by the lid. So keep that in mind. And for, for settings, after looking at that te material test card, I uh, settled on 556 millimeters per second at 72% power. Air assist is off. I'm going to do it at 400 millimeters per second. I found that the bolt does engrave a little better at a little bit higher uh, LPI than the regular CO2 machines do. So I'm going to engrave that at 396, and we're going to see how that turns out. So those are my settings. And we'll go ahead and send this to the bolt. So we're going to make sure that we have our user origin set to the lower left. And the reason being is up here, um, you know, there's more ammo can up here, and I don't know where to set my, my origin. So I'm going to set it right at this corner, and uh, that way we know kind of where we're at. So if you see, I'm using user origin and I'm setting my start point at the lower left. And so that's where we're gonna start our project today. I'm gonna to go ahead and get it sent. I guess I gotta select it, huh? And we'll say send. And it's over there. Let's jump over to the bolt and get this engraved. Well, we're just about done. We're into this engrave about 13 minutes. And uh, I find it interesting to see that dark in part of the engraving on the left-hand side. Well, I'll be interested to see how that uh, shines up. So it looks like it took us 13 minutes and 58 seconds with the settings that we had. Let's go ahead and take this out. But as you can see, doing an ammo box, uh, on the bolt is a piece of cake with a twister tray. So let's get this shined up and take a look. Well, there you have it. Engraving an ammo box on your Thunderbolt. Piece of cake when you have a Roco twister tray, um, follow the steps that I used, learn how to use those material test cards. That will help you a lot in the way of determining your settings. What I did is I pulled this, I took the lid off, I pulled that ammo box all the way to the front of the tray, and then I have a little stop block on the right-hand side that I slid it against. That way, if you have multiple ammo cans to do, it's very repeatable. I put in my setting, I engraved it, um, I was a little concerned about this area because it was so dark when it was engraving, but it shined up fine. There is a little bit of inconsistency in the color, but normally that's pretty standard for ammo boxes. What I normally like to tell my customers is if they want an ammo box, understand that the engraving could be a little mottled, that you could have slightly different colors in that steel, and that's to be expected. Most people, if you tell them up front, they have no problems with that. It was going to be a great uh, idea. The gal that's uh, got this is um, going to, she's got a bunch of trinkets that she's going to put inside, and this is going to be kind of the gift box, which I think is a great idea because you don't throw it away. Now he can use it as a tool uh, toolbox for his side-by-side -side or whatever. So a lot of fun. I enjoy doing this kind of stuff. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did, give me a thumbs up. I'd sure appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. We'd sure appreciate that. Until next time, thanks and have a great day.